Because our landing approaches are just a little bit different, I'd like to take a few seconds and go over them with you. Uh, when a owner comes in and picks up his airplane, a lot of times they're used to, in the approach segment, deploying flaps almost every segment of the approach. In other words, they'll drop 10 degrees of flaps, say on downwind, 10 on, 10 on base, and another 10 on final. And what I've found is with a lot of people, if you do a flap change on every segment of the approach, what happens is every segment of the approach, you're retrimming the airplane, you've usually got to get a different speed, and you're adjusting power. And sometimes a person gets just a little bit behind. And uh, what I found works better is when you come into an approach on downwind, get your speed reduced by the departure end of the strip, start coming down with the flaps, and at midfield what you're looking for is, in this case, say 20 degrees of flaps at 60 knots. Now what I've found is, is like instrument flying. A given power setting and a given flap setting produce a given airspeed. On our airplanes, about 14 or 15 inches of manifold pressure and 20 degrees of flaps produce around 55 knots. So consequently, what, what I like to have happen is by midfield, you've got your speed stabilized, you've got your flaps down, and then at that point, you're going to carry that flap setting and speed all the way around to a landing. So once you get that established at midfield, you just kind of drive to the end of the runway, and when you get to the end of the runway, it's just like hitting the outer marker on an ILS, you throttle back about an inch of manifold pressure for every 100 to 150 foot a minute rate of descent that you want. So we're, we're at 15 inches of manifold pressure at the end of the strip. We throttle back 3 inches to, to 12 inches of manifold pressure. That produces a four or 500 foot a minute rate of descent, which we then carry all the way around to a successful landing on the runway. I usually don't ha have our customers aim for a particular spot because sometimes the approach goes to pot as they try to stretch the glider, chop the power, and hit. So the big concern when you're starting this is maintain a speed, and what I want is the precision to maintain a, a given airspeed, in this case 60 knots, within plus or minus 5 knots all the way around, while at the same time maintaining your rate of descent. On landing, while I don't really care exactly where you hit, what I want is I want a good full stall landing when you touch down. And normally what will happen is a customer will come in, he'll flare, he'll make a nice landing at slow speed, thinks he's got it nailed, and I'll reach up and pull the control wheel back and we're back in the air again flying at, at four, five, six feet. So it tells you he had a lot of excess speed. So what I'm really looking for are when those main wheels touch the runway, that control wheel is back against the stop and that tells you you've got you've got minimum speed on touchdown. So this is kind of the pattern we're running. And just remember, at midfield, the speed and power setting, flap setting is stabilized. And at that point, all you're doing is concentrating on maintaining that speed and a rate of descent to a full stall landing. Regarding approaches, the main points I'd like people to remember are elevators control airspeed, power, the throttle, always controls rate of descent and altitude, you have to have excellent positional awareness so you know where the strip's at every second of the approach. And if you float more than 50 feet to a full stall landing, you've got too much speed.